Welcome, Wiffle Nation. This is Late Night Focus from Behind the Blur. This is a show about all things wiffle ball from the Skibby Wiffle Ball League. I'm Spencer Bogat, and I'm bringing Sam Skibby, Commissioner of the Skibby Wiffle Ball League, and Gus Skibby, Captain of the SWBL Royals. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for doing it, Spencer. Yeah, Absolutely. Great. Today we kick things off with our opening ceremony. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, national anthem sung by ben, uh, Brian Benware. Yeah, Captain of the Astros, one of the people that I think this league means the most to him. I mean, he he really is invested in this league. And for him to, he was really nervous, you know, to sing the National Anthem today in front of a bunch of dudes. But he did a really great job. A little bit, uh, I don't think I heard any of his nerves come out. And it was a beautiful voice uh, on a beautiful evening for Wiffle Ball. And he really set the tone for the weekend. It was beautiful. And, you, and you could, it was dead silent, too. It was. And everybody was looking at the American flag. And everybody took it seriously. And I felt it, like it was, was much more respectful than it, it was, has been in the past. And with me, so. I, I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Right. And this is a weekend where, yes, we're playing Wiffle Ball. We're with our friends. <laughs> we're having a great time. Um, but re in reality, we were able to do this because right. of the holiday. So... The way that he sang that, it was very serious. It kind of more meaningful. It gave you meaning, and it gave the the weekend a meaning. And I I'm really happy that we're you know we're yeah. we're treating it like that. Yeah. And even moving forward with that with our our first pitch, we okay. had uh, Chuck come out, Chuck Hassey, yep. uh, Marine. He served in the Vietnam War. He came out throughout the first pitch. Very emotional for him. Yep. Uh, he was doing that in memoriam of his uncle Don, who was in the Marines as well. Yeah. Uh, what did you guys see about that? Yeah, and he had a few words to say at the end of. Um, when he threw out the first pitch, and he was so thankful to have the opportunity to come, and yeah. and we are so thankful as as, as a wiffle ball community to have him come out and um, be the first, to be one of the first veterans to uh, come throughout a first pitch, and I hope it is a yearly thing that we keep doing here at uh, the tournament. It'd so. be a great tradition. It really puts meaning into the weekend for us. You know, right. we do raise money with our with our philanthropy. Yep. It'd be nice to actually. You know, bring in some veterans to yeah. honor them as well. You saw it in his eyes just how much this meant to him. It was yeah. very special. And when you see that emotion from him, it kind of gives you perspective what this weekend's really about, right? Yeah. yeah. So we had the trophy ceremony following that to crown last year's champions, <laughs> the Phillies. Tell us about that, Sam. Yeah, it was good. The, the Phillies had a great season last year, and obviously the year of Bogad was 2016. And you did a you did a great job. You and Chris Metter brought in the team to, to bring in Tyler and Ed Lowe, and you guys put together a really great run and defeated the A's in the championship last year. And your trophy ceremony was was good today. A few boo, a few boo, boos here and there, but uh, it, it went, went off well. You know, the champion's not necessarily the most liked. <laughs> That's always true. That's true. <laughs> you know that. But speaking of the Phillies... Formerly the Phillies, actually. We're going to move on to the Twins in their first game. They played the Yankees. They didn't quite make it past the Yankees. Why don't you tell us about that game? You know, it, the the Twins came out with not having Derek Thompson. They, they thought they were going to have a little bit of a back injury, but the person who stepped up the most for them was Will Rath today, and we're going to talk a little bit more about him later on in the statistics. But, you know, the Yankees came out on top. Jackson pitched a great game, uh, and obviously Scott Poley had a fantastic day at the plate and led his team to victory once again so yeah Jackson ultimately got the W on the day but Scott Poley was the difference maker with four home runs and uh, I think that's gonna have some pretty good momentum moving into tomorrow For sure. um, next game on the docket was A's and Royals A's came into the season after a best finish in franchise history for them momentum was visible with five in the top of the first Royal stroke back yeah. with seven, so yeah. what happened? Yeah, and after being the captain of the Royals, after the first uh, inning, I was a little uh, uneasy because our Cy Wiffle from last year, Sam Skibby here, uh, he let up four solo shots in the first top of the first inning. So I was a little uneasy being captain, but uh, we, did strike, we did strike back with uh, seven runs in the bottom of the first. So. Yeah, I'd say ultimately the depth of the Royals was just too much for the yeah. A's to come back from. So 11-8 yeah. was your final there. Um, another game we had today, dark horse for a uh, potential title, the Brewers, and then also a former champion of the Rockies. They battled out. Close game, 4-2. Great, great game. What was the difference maker in that one? You, you know, it was, it was a great pitcher's game. Yes. Great pitcher's game. To see the Rockies and Brewers, who are two dominant hitting teams, ending in a 4-2 ending score, that's that's pretty incredible. You know, they had the, the, the pitching from David Olderman and Brett Spencer that game, and Brett had a hot day, you know, on the mound. He did. And... 
with David Olderman and him were both kind of thrown a little bit quick at times and things like that. And I know they, uh, there was our first heat check of the day, you know, our first heat yeah. check warnings. But, you know, both of them kind of settled in, and 6-5 to five is a pitcher's duel in this league for sure. So they did a good job. Right, we're not used to those uh, close matchups. So no. that first strike rule, did that have a difference maker in this, in this game, you guys think? Absolutely. I think I think it's changing the way that hitters are seeing the the way that they get their pitches in and how the different styles of pitching that they have to really adapt to and they have to change up their hitting styles accordingly. And and the what is this first strike rule? You want to you want to share with the viewers. So first strike rule for the viewers who don't know, if you take a strike within your first any pitch of the at bat, if you take a strike, you are out. And in years past, that was not the case. So we're seeing a lot less offense so far. Yeah. So maybe it translates into lower ERAs, maybe in a hitter friendly league. Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially I saw with some of the Rockies players in that last game, um, they are just swinging at the first pitch no matter what. And Correct. just to get it out of the way, Kyle Breida just hacked and went it was way outside of the plate. So. I think some hitters are taking that strategy right. with that first It's definitely going to be an experiment. We'll see how it plays out. So another game we had out on the docket today, D-backs fell short to the Twins. Wasn't much of a, you know, a big-time offensive game, but that one ended in 7-1. I guess we'll find out more about the D-backs as the weekend goes on. Um, another game we had, Rockies topped the Expos ex- as expected. Anything noticeable from that game? I mean, obviously the big storyline here is, is going to be the no-hitter from Brett Spencer. Um, 18 to nothing um, is going to be a huge blowout in, in any scenario, but the Expos obviously were a little cold coming in. And I don't know, uh, we, Gus was taking the stats that game, and you can truly see just from a stats perspective when, when they start getting those couple innings in and they don't have a hit and they're getting struck out in the first pitch strike rule back to back, uh, back to back people. I mean, it's, it's hard to watch sometimes. Yep, a lot of singles, a lot of home runs to see them get four straight outs. And then Brett almost had the perfect game bid, and then he. Uh, walked or walked uh, Matt Germer to first. Uh, Lose to Matt Germer. He was gotta, upset. He was upset. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say it sounded like everyone in the crowd was rooting against Brett. I don't know why, <laughs> but you know what? They weren't necessarily on the same page but, with him. But there, yes, so. congrats to Brett. That was a, that was a yes. great game. Yeah, anytime, even though it was three innings, anytime you can get a hey. no hitter, nonetheless, almost a perfect game. That's pretty impressive. So, hey, since we're talking about Brett, let's talk about some standouts from today. Um, we got a few players to talk about. Scott Poley had a hell of a day. I know he only had one game, but four home runs, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And Scott Poley had four at-bats in the game, four home runs. That's that's pretty unheard of in this league. And um, to have an 1,000 batting average going into Saturday is, is big for his team, and he really needs to lead his team coming into Well, especially tomorrow. in a 6-5 game. I mean, without Scott, yep. I mean, what happens? Where's the game? offense? Where's yeah. the offense? Yeah. You know, it's a pitcher's duel, but at the end of the day, the offense is what really got the Yankees over the hump. Yeah. Another guy that had a noticeable day, Steve Hayes for the A's. Even though they lost, yeah. he was pretty impressive. You know, despite the loss, you know, Steve comes out and goes five for six, and he has three home runs, four RBIs. And I think that Steve has to really step up being that, that number one hitter for that team. Um, I know Luke wasn't there today, and who knows if Luke might come come out for the Saturday and right. Sunday games with the rumors of Luke back at list swirling. But Steve Hayes is going to be stepping up, and he's number two in MVP right now. So he, he's got a good shot at having a solid year. And even being the pitcher against him, you can't find a spot to pitch against him. He doesn't have a lot of holes. Right. Another player I noticed, uh, Will Rath, he was supposed to be a pitcher for the Twins, and Derek got hurt, and uh, he ended up playing a pretty big role on the offense. And, uh, and there's, there's a lot of people. And Will, especially from the left side of the plate, it just seemed like he had the nice, easy swing going the whole time. And so it was, it was good for the Twins to have that kind of the catch-up that they needed without Derek. Right. Also, Kyle Brita, Sam Skibby, both had pretty good performances. Uh, you know, anytime we have good performances, we're going to have some slumpers. You guys have <laughs> anybody in mind that, uh, you know, usually expect a little bit more from and they just didn't quite make the bed this morning? And, you know... Two of the top two MVPs yeah. from last year, yeah. Spencer Bogad, sorry Spencer, and <laughs> Kyle Cornell. Yeah, uh, big slumpers. Spencer, I think he went one for eight on the day, and uh, that's unheard of. The, last year was the year of of Bogad, the year of Bogad. and. To, to, to see that he went 1-8 and eight is, right. is pretty surprising. Yeah, and Kyle Cornell only had one hit on the day as well in their game that they had one for four and really struggled. You know, he had did two strike or one strikeout, a couple ground outs, uh, and he he didn't have the, the right stuff. And, you know, him and Peter really need to click on the same page if the Brewers are going to be successful this weekend. And Peter just had a decent day, and Kyle yep. did not have a good day. So if they're not right. going to click well, then it's going to be a problem. And I'm not sure, you know, we won't be able to explain it till after the season's over, but... 
you can blame it on the first strike rule, but we got players that are doing pretty well and other players are doing yeah. bad. So it may just yeah. be one of those strange seasons. But, you know, moving forward, we got some projections maybe tomorrow, Sunday. We've seen some games. There's a, there, The Astros haven't played yet. What are you guys looking forward to tomorrow as a possible uh, storyline? Yeah, and going along with the Astros, I – Brian Benware got three new guys that are coming in from Pennsylvania, some NWLA guys, and we're I just, I'm kind of curious to see how they fit and how they mesh and how they do tomorrow. You know, the Astros especially the I think the biggest thing for their game is going to be the trash talk. <laughs> you know, I think that having Rob Walters on your team is going to be a big pull for them and having I think even Artem and those Pennsylvania guys might even get on the action with them and Brian Benware's going to love it and eat right into it. Cam Branson feeds into it too so the Astros might be a big a big one for that. And not only are we projecting storylines weather. I mean, every year it rains. What are we looking like, guys? Looks good. It's I- it's very, very minimal. It uh, looks like Saturday night we may have a chance for some, some showers and things like that. It kind of sprinkled today, but it went by really quickly. It's going to be really hot tomorrow, so we think it'll just kind of fizzle away. But it looks good. The weather the weather forecast gets better and better every time. And I know that's our biggest enemy this entire time, but yeah, yeah. You know, we're really excited. I think the blur is going to be looking really nice tomorrow. I'm excited for Well, and for plus, the day. you know, it did sprinkle a little bit. We got through it. It only lasted, you know, maybe two or three minutes. But we do have the tarps, which are huge. That's new this year. Yes, it was big. We, we thank everybody that was uh, instrumental in receiving those. So, Great. Well, that pretty much covers everything. we got a few reminders for you. Um, we've got the skills competition tomorrow. That's brought to you by Caller and Metter, Attorneys at Law. We appreciate their sponsorship. Um, and, of course, when we speak about all of our sponsors, we like to mention the Sports Barn, um, Sandbar, Glendale Chrysler, Corner Pub and Grill. Thank you so much for hosting us for our social tonight. We appreciate that. Um, you guys, any anybody's got any uh, closing comments or? No, um, we're we're excited for a, a big day tomorrow. You know, start at seven fifteen a.m. We end at eight p.m. Um, we're excited to see who kind of falls into the roles of who's going to the lead their MVP race after tomorrow, and who's going to kind of emerge as one of those top teams in this league. You know, it's sad to say, but half of our lead, half of our season is over after tomorrow. So that's we're going to be works. halfway done. That's what happens when you cram a whole bunch of games into a short <laughs> into weekend. weekend. Yep. 45 games. Yeah. That's how it works. All right, guys. Well, for Gus Gibby, Sam Skibby, I'm Spencer Bogat. This has been Late Night Focus from Behind the Blur. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>